All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a very different video today. I'm actually here streaming on YouTube and uh, Instagram today because I thought this was too interesting of a potential project to uh, not share with people. And the reason why I say that is because I am not myself an artist, but a local art gallery, actually, that features, I guess you could call it eco art. I don't know the exact proper term, but anyways, they contacted me. I've done beach clean events with them before about doing an art exhibit piece, or I guess they're having like an exhibition or something and they wanted me to contribute. Now, the reason why that's interesting is because again, I am, it's not even that I'm not an artist. I'm far from an artist. I'm actually uh, more so of a writer myself. And that's usually <laughs> if I do something creative or, or artistic with beach cleaning, it's usually along those lines. So I'm pretty out of my element when it comes to doing uh, physical art projects, but I have done one piece before. I did a couple of years ago, a display at an art exhibition a couple towns over from me. And that was really cool. But again, even for that, I sort of didn't necessarily do anything crazy, technically fancy. I basically crafted a, uh, I say crafted, I found like a, a basically a tall rectangular clear thing and i uh, filled it up with beach trash that i collected <laughs> and uh, i had like a display board next to it and it looked really cool um you know it was just really to feature like oh here's all the trash you can find in one you know afternoon beach clean that sort of thing so that was pretty cool and a lot of people really liked that and it was really interesting to expose people to different types of plastic pollution and get them talking about all of that but um I decided to do something a little bit different this time because again, I've already done that. So as you'll see momentarily, I am indeed way out of my element with this type of <laughs> artistic endeavor because uh, my plan is basically to try to use bottle caps to create a globe of plastic trash. And all of my source material is essentially stuff that I found on the beach. So I collected a ton of bottle caps um, I think most of these were from one afternoon, actually, at a local beach. And what I tried to do was sort them by, see, I'm already dropping them everywhere, sort them by uh, color. So I have uh, white bottle caps that I plan to use for like polar ice caps on this globe. I have uh, blue ones that I plan to use for ocean parts, obviously, uh, green ones for land, and then yellow ones for desert stuff. Now, again, Will this actually work? That remains to be seen. So if anybody has any <laughs> comments or suggestions, because I know I have a lot of artist friends, uh, either on YouTube or Instagram, who uh, maybe have better ideas of how to craft something like this. But yeah, I thought, you know, even just today, taking a little bit of time to sort of talk about some alternatives that you can uh, consider using beach trash that you find for is really interesting because it's a topic that comes up often when I'm doing beach clean events, especially, or lectures or that sort of thing, or even in my videos on YouTube where people ask like, okay, well, what can I actually do with this beach trash, right? Like other than just throwing it out, which obviously is just kind of shifting the, the problem from, you know, being at the beach to maybe being in a landfill, what else can I do? And, and I always say, first of all, that that is somewhat better, right? I mean, if you're removing essentially these plastics, which are toxic chemicals from marine environments, that's good for the marine environments. But again, uh, it's hard to get to all of that, right? And obviously, that's now kind of sitting in a landfill somewhere. And and again, that's, you know, if it's sequestered all in one place, I guess that's somewhat better. But I think it's pretty cool to think about how we can use a lot of the stuff for different types of projects, too. And uh, again, there's lots of people doing lots of really interesting stuff with different types of art projects. So I uh, <laughs> figured I'd try my hand at it and see how it goes, but um, I don't know. We'll 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 see exactly how far we get with something like this. Um, yeah, I see we have some uh, some people in uh, in the chat, so uh, that's good. And and again, it's just to sort of give ideas and, and share ideas. Uh, one thing I will show you to demonstrate exactly how out of my element I am is I realized very quickly. So. This is what's interesting when you try to do a new project or anything creative, I think, is you sort of start to run into 
uh, logistical questions. And the first one I, I came up with was the fact that, okay, like, well, let me find this basket. I found a basketball, right? And I said, this is perfect, right? To use as a globe to try to, you know, pattern out what would be like land masses. But as you can see, many of these bottle caps are quite big. So like, I think it, it's going to be hard to kind of make these map out like different parts of land. So I said, well, these bottle caps are pretty much trash anyways. Unfortunately, you can't really recycle them, uh, most of them, because they're pretty dirty. They're pretty grimy. Um, and that's one of the things that a lot of recyclers will say uh, not to mix in really dirty uh, pieces of recycling because they'll just like throw out the whole batch or whatever or it can contaminate batches, that sort of thing. Um, you see that a lot with like cardboard recycling. A lot of municipalities are super strict where they have disclaimers everywhere not to mix in um, stuff like cardboard, uh, uh, like pizza boxes, right? Greasy types of cardboard because apparently that can, I don't know, contaminate stuff or ruin machines. I'm not a uh, recycleologist myself. I just kind of read a lot of this stuff. But anyway, so I kind of looked at this and I was like, yeah, these are probably going to be too big, uh, some of them on their own. So I was like, okay, what do I do from here? And to show you again, as I keep saying, how out of my element I am, I'm like, oh, I know, I'll start to smash them to break them up into smaller pieces. Since again, they're, I, they, as far as I can tell, these you know, really, um, there's not much else I can do with them. So I found, I took this and decided this would be a good idea to try to <laughs> break up some of my bottle caps. Um, and it actually does work, which is even scarier to me because uh, I don't feel as if I should uh, be allowed to use this um, just as a general rule. But it actually <laughs> works pretty well with some of these bottle cap pieces um, against my better judgment. Um, so maybe I'll show you <laughs> some bottle cap sword slicing in a bit. Um, but I also have what was a, a big point of controversy actually earlier in the week on my Instagram uh, page, this uh, potato rock um, that I was, I've was i been using to try to see if I could smash some of these bottle caps. And the reason why I say that's a point of controversy is because I made a poll where I said, is this a potato or a rock? And people had very strong opinions um, about that. Um, and as you can see, it's actually, in fact, a rock. So uh, sad to say I was a fan of potato, but turns out it's actually a rock. Um, but I like the ideas of sort of, I, I, I'll call this ingenuity, right? Because my first thought was like, oh, let me try to find a hammer. But, you know, I live right by the beach. Just walk down and find a rock. Works perfectly fine. And it's not like I'm taking rocks from the beach. I'll just bring this rock back when I'm done, right? Uh, depending that I don't smash it into a million pieces along with my fingers. Um, but that's basically the plan. Uh, and this has worked pretty well too. But what I'm noticing slowly is that different types of bottle caps break in different ways. It's really weird to me because a lot of times when I find bottle caps on the beach, they're either pretty whole like, like this, or they're already sort of shattered. They're already, you know, either crushed or frayed in some way. And I don't know how they're getting crushed because it's actually really hard to break bottle caps. I was, I, I've been surprised. I mean, I even have these on like slabs of stone and, and brick and <laughs> to try to like stabilize it. And it's like, you know, sort of hard to, to break through a lot of them. Um, so that's the weird thing about plastic. Like in some ways it's really tough, but it's also really uh, sort of brittle and like kind of squishy. It's a really weird, not so great material um, in the long term in terms of it being pollution, right? Uh, such as such as the way with a lot of stuff that we make. But again, pretty instantly I started making mistakes with trying to do this. Uh, as you can see here, this was once one stone piece and it is now two. Um, which is a shame because I really like this stone piece. I'm not quite sure what it is. I don't know if anybody in a, in chat knows what it is. Uh, oh, hey, guys. I see you guys in chat. Um, but uh, I think it, I don't know, maybe it's to hold candles or something. But I destroyed it pretty quickly, smashing bottle caps with rocks on it. Um, so that was funny and somewhat entertaining. Um, <laughs> so I have this brick, which is a little softer, I think. And it's typically uh, so far worked a lot better. Um, but yeah, different bottle caps, they kind of break uh, differently with, you know, some of them do better with the rock as opposed to uh, my machete um, plastic breaker. I got to stop holding that. Anyways, um, <laughs> and 
then I realized, again, a lot of this is trial and error. I realized, hey, do you know what's much less psychotic than swinging swords at bottle caps? Is just take a scissor and cut your plastic like a normal human. Of course, my monkey brain immediately defaulted to let me smash it with rocks and swords uh, because that's much more entertaining. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to do that just so that you can see because, uh, you know, oh, Jesus, I just broke that piece again. Yeah, see, it's like some pieces are super brittle and some pieces are super like malleable. Like you couldn't you couldn't pay me a million dollars to break this with my hands. I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, sword is a different story, though, uh, and the scissor might not work on this, but the sword might, which is interesting. So anyways, um, that's basically been my experimentation so far. Uh, how this will work from here, I'm not entirely sure. I'm curious if it uh, is actually tenable in terms of breaking up against some of these larger pieces into smaller ones. But uh, I think that's really sort of what I have to do because, again, as you can see, this basketball, you know, it's a normal size basketball, but it's relatively, uh, relatively small, relatively concise. And the first thing I did with this was I actually cut it open and I put uh, duct tape on a lot of the inside to try to round it out and give it a little more uh, sturdiness, I guess. Um, and it seems to have worked. It seems to have helped. So I'm hoping that all holds. And, uh, <laughs> you know, hopefully we will, uh, I, I think with the, you know, I'm going to essentially glue these pieces on um, with that added factor, it will, you know, stay. And then my, the last piece I plan on doing is finding a, uh, a piece of um, like fishing line to hang it and then tape up the top basically. And so it'll be like a floating globe display. So that's the game plan again, whether or not that actually works. Um, only time and my madness will tell. Um, but anyways, like I said, I don't know if anybody watching has done similar projects by, uh, you know, yourself as well. Uh, I would love to know um, if you have, because again, I know that there are people who use bottle caps to do certain types of art things. And sadly, there's no shortage of them. Again, I have about 500 here that I found all in like a one day beach clean it was not overly difficult to find. Uh, again, everything from like medicine bottle caps to, you know, obviously drink bottle caps, sodas, uh, water bottles, all that sort of stuff too. So um, it's been really, uh, you know, it's it's sad to find, but it's interesting to think about like, okay, what can we do with these moving forward? And again, like I said, uh, some of these you can certainly crush up in, in other ways, which I think will be useful towards trying to pattern it on this limited space that we we have to work with here. And as I promised, um, I do have my, uh, <laughs> I'll call it bottle cap crushing sword, uh, as well as my rock. But I do have safety precautions as well, relatively speaking. So I have um, gloves, which I actually use as beach cleaning gloves, um, typically, but they're going to double as safety gloves today. And these glasses, which those of you watching who know me, Maybe thinking, oh, Professor Labs, I did not know that you wore glasses. And that's because I don't. Um, I got these for like from a friend as part of a Halloween costume a few years ago. And they're actually false lens glasses. But they make me look smart, which is good because I'm using them as safety goggles. And that's probably not so smart. Um, so it's uh, <laughs> it, it evens out, I suppose. But um, yeah, I'm curious, like with this one, this first one, um, if this will work better with a sword or a rock, I guess we'll try the rock first. Um, again, I'm just going to, you know, show you how tough some of these are. And then what I'm going to do is try to trace like on this globe, some basic patterns for like land masses that I want to put these plastic pieces on. Uh, cause I don't want to smash up all these bottle caps yet because I don't like, there may be some of them where it's like, okay, if I have a big part for blue ocean, I can just put the, the whole cap or something. I don't know yet. Like I might wind up smashing most of them and have them all as fragments. I think that might look cool too. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but again, this is part of the journey, part of the process. Uh, but again, I'm going to need a lot of smaller pieces too. And cause there's a lot of whole bottle caps here right now. So Certainly these bigger pieces are going to be too big for the surface here, so I can smash them up regardless. So as you see with my potato rock, um, 
This I think is going to crush pretty easily. Uh, but let's find out. And plastic, I feel like as it gets older, it gets more brittle in general. But let's find out. All right. It definitely broke, which is good. Uh, again, the hardest part here is continuing to break it where is where the scissor sort of comes in. So I can kind of cut from here, I think, to trim pieces as I'll need to fit them on this globe surface. So I think that's really the, the trick is to break up these bigger pieces and then use my scissors like, again, a non monkey human uh, rather than <laughs> Professor Lab Smash uh, to, again, like, you know, cut them and, um, you know, you can see, yeah, cut off little pieces. And that will help me sort of, I think, pattern in like the exact, um, you know, like almost coastlines, that sort of thing. Because the basketball is pretty small, I think, when you try to consider fitting like the entire world on it, right? So obviously, I want to make sure to um, have have as many sort of fragments as possible to fill in those spaces. So I'm not like, it looks something like a map of the world, at least. And that's the other problem is that, as, like I said, as much as I'm not an artist, I'm not much of a drawer either. Um, so I'm going to try to trace what I think is a map of the world on it um, with a Sharpie marker that I have. But uh, the, And the good thing about that is that it, I'm going to cover it up, obviously, with all these plastic bits so I can redo it and be as wrong as I need to with it because I'm going to cover it all up anyways, right? At least that's my thinking. The plans of uh, mice and beach cleaners often go awry, unfortunately. Um, oh, man, I really smashed this one, huh? There's like a lot of little fragments. Um, anyways, but then we have, you know, these pieces, which are a little tougher. And this is a uh, an orange juice lid container piece. And I don't think that this will actually um, be rock smashable. I think, you know, this is a pretty tough piece of plastic. So I may have to go to my my big uh, tools here, which uh, <laughs> I, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. I feel like people are probably a little concerned in chat, um, but it actually works pretty well. I did trial runs before I hit record, so um, let's see if we can at least break up this bigger piece. Um, because again, something like this is just going to be too big to like put on the on the surface itself. I feel like, um, yeah. yeah. Hey guys, yeah, good to see you. Uh, so let's try this. Oh boy. I'm I'm definitely getting fragments. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, that went flying. <laughs> Hold on a second, I gotta pick up the pieces here. The good news is it worked. The bad news is my neighbors are probably very concerned if they can either see <laughs> through my windows or they can hear uh, a lunatic with a machete chopping bottle caps. Um, anyways, um, yeah, this is good because I now have these tinier pieces. I can continue again like a human with the, the scissors, um, you know, or just breaking some of it maybe. 
Um, so I think that's going to be a big part of what I do with some of these larger pieces moving forward. Because as you can see now, I have a lot more to work with. And especially with like these uh, like yellow pieces, I figure I use for like desert terrain or something like that. So um, that could be, you know, something that I want to break up pretty, uh, pretty in depth, pretty in detail. But uh... <laughs> yeah. It's uh to <laughs> to uh, answer what you're probably thinking. It is it is fun to to smash with a, a machete. So um, it's coming in handy. It turns out. Um, so I guess the next thing to do is, like I said, sort of try to trace an outline of the globe on here. And I I think again, this is sort of the trick with something like this. Like, you know, how my spatial awareness is tenuous at best. So I have to sort of try to figure out like, okay, how much, how big do I draw some of these land masses um, so I can fit everything on, right? Uh, and I'm really lost in that sense. So I'm just going to bring up like a picture of a map and, you know, try to, I guess, see how I can, I can, uh, see how I can trace that map of the world unfortunately all these maps that i look up online they're like flat world maps right because we live in a flat earth um and i'm being a uh a uh what do you call it a uh a uh, rebel and doing a round earth here um it would be funny if i did a flat earth display instead right a uh, plastic flat earth but um the good thing actually about a basketball, doing a basketball like this, is that you have these lines on it, which I didn't realize till like earlier today. I'm like, oh, this is perfect because I have like an equatorial line, but I also have the um, east uh, hemisphere, west hemisphere lines too, um, <laughs> which I never thought of until, uh, like I said earlier today, where I was like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. Like I can I can use this um, to help, you know, maybe map out some of these, um, you know, sort of terrain points. So that's a uh, that's pretty cool. Um, so I guess what I'll try to do, and again, I have a general idea where a lot of this will go. So I'm, I'm thinking obviously up top here would be a polar ice cap. Down here would be like another, it would be Antarctica essentially. Um, and then I think the land masses are going to be the trickiest, right? Because you, again, only have so much space to work with on something the size of a basketball. Ideally, I would have liked something much bigger, but I couldn't find anything at the beach. And my idea here is that I wanted to use only beach trash, only stuff that I found at the beach. So uh, that's why I have all the bottle caps, this uh, basketball. And, um, you know, obviously I'm using just glue that I have because I do um, a lot. Actually, I do. Uh, the, the other art thing I do sort of do is I make um, like birthday cards and holiday cards now with sea glass. I do sea glass designs. So I'll do like a, a beach or an ocean or sunset or something with pieces of sea glass glued on the card. Um, Cause I think that's pretty cool. It's, it's something that's a little different and, you know, a little unique maybe. Um, and again, people really like it. They're like, Oh, that's, you know, super cool. Um, but anyways, so I have to sort of figure out, like I said, okay, how can I make these land masses uh, work out here? And a part of that is me, having any idea <laughs> of what global terrains look like. Um, so I guess the best way to do it would probably start, where should I start? I guess I'll start with Alaska since I'm technically in the U S and I'm used to writing from left to right. I guess that makes sense. Again, totally out of my element here in terms of how this uh, should work. Um, yeah, exactly. If I say so. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I, I, I'm a much better beach cleaner and writer than I am artist for sure. Um, at, at least comparatively so. Um, yeah, because I think the trick is sort of doing this drawing, and then yeah, y you have you know what's at the equator, obviously, and then um, you would have like. Europe and Africa over here. So maybe I should start with that. Like Europe and Africa, since that's like the line, um, the east-west line goes like right through there, I think, right? 
that actually could be really helpful as like a starting point of reference. Uh, global, let me try that. Global map with longitude. Because I have my longitudinal lines, you know, essentially here, right? Which is kind of uh, the point of why it's useful. Um, wow, why are these maps so blurry? Come on. It's the 21st century. Give me a non-blurry map. Okay, here we go. Yeah, because it goes, the east-west line goes through basically like England and down through like uh, Western Africa, right? So that would be, yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny too, you realize like looking at this, I, I really like those maps where they show how the size of land masses actually are. And obviously maps are very, <laughs> certain maps are very biased, that, uh, more so than others. But you realize with trying to fit this on a globe, uh, it brings it up again how like, oh yeah, like, you know, a lot of the northern land masses are actually much smaller than they look like uh, Alaska and even Europe and Russia, um, Canada, because again, it's it's sort of a distortion on a flat map, whereas the stuff at the equator is actually much bigger, like, um, uh, you know, like Africa, India, those sorts of places, right? Um, but I think essentially we would start with Africa here. Yeah, because the equator goes basically like that. And then how far south would I want it to go is the question. Because this, the good thing about this is that we have a the hole at the top, so we know where the north is, the North Pole, but we don't have that at the south. I can sort of guesstimate it in general, so I'm just going to draw a dot where I think it is as a point of reference. But anyways, uh, I can only think like how to draw it, map it out in relation to how far it looks like it's from Antarctica <laughs> in relation to how... Uh, how big it is in general. And I already screwed it up, I think. <laughs> yeah, my my uh, my line is all off kilter. So this is fine because I'm just going to shift it over. Yeah. Uh, we could do that. And then that. I think that's actually not terrible for <laughs> the African lands <laughs> starting out. Um, and actually, I could do, I could try to do Antarctica too, so that I, uh, I have another point of reference. That's going to be hard because I don't know, because Antarctica is always sort of displayed on a map as like it's one line, right, on a flat map, which is obviously nonsense. Um, so it's like, okay, well, how do I sort of do that uh, on here? So I think, you know, it looks relatively like whatever, you know, sort of like that below Africa. I don't know. That actually, I think, looks pretty good starting out. I don't know what you guys think, but I'm satisfied with it so far. Yeah, I'm very satisfied with this so far. And by satisfied, I mean not as disappointed as I thought it would be. <laughs> um, cool. So I'm going to try to just, because uh, again, this whole project is going to take many hours. So I want to just, you know, sort of show you like what my process <laughs> is turning out into, because I think one of the things that I love doing um on either Instagram or YouTube is, you know, showing you guys my mistakes so you know sort of what to avoid if you want to try similar projects. Um, but I, what I plan to do is actually pretty much try to map out the whole thing before I really start gluing a whole lot on. Because again, if it turns out like, oh, I should make Africa a little bit bigger or something like that, right? Um, I may need to redraw in order to 
um, you know, to do that, to make that obvious. Um, but I do want to try gluing a few pieces just to see how that goes and to show you if this type of glue or material is actually worthwhile using. Um, and again, I know, for example, that like the bottom here is going to be, you know, certainly Antarctica, which is going to be these icy pieces. Um, so let's try to just use a bit of a broken bit of plastic here. Yeah, some of this, again, it's easier than others to handle because it's brittle. And again, my suggestion would be with working with plastic for art is to um, definitely take advantage of scissors. You know, if you cut slowly, it takes a little bit longer than smashing it like a monkey with a machete or a rock, but it's probably safer. Again, this will kind of fly off um, once you cut through it sometimes. But uh, if you just like kind of hold it, you know, down into your towel or something like that, it will, you know, you won't have the pieces go flying off in crazy directions. Um, and when working with super glue, because again, I, I do know this pretty well from um, doing other projects, like I said, with like birthday cards and that sort of thing. Um, do, I would say you to use gloves, you know, I actually, if you know anything from my YouTube videos, especially, uh, I'm not a fan of wearing gloves because uh, while I beach clean, despite all very good evidence and advice that people give as to why you should wear gloves. Um, just because like, you know, especially in the summer, it's so hot. It's like so sticky and uh, I don't know. It's just like uncomfortable. And I obviously, you know, use sanitizer, I hand sanitizer. I, uh, you know, I'm super careful about like picking certain things up. There's a lot of little things that you can sort of keep in mind to keep yourself safe as well. Uh, I always tell people when in doubt to wear gloves, but um, ironically, I'm going to use them today because I don't like getting glue on my hands. Not that that's the end of the world. It's not going to maybe kill you, but, um, you know, you don't want your fingers to get obviously glued together, right? Um, but uh, yeah, oh, I just did that almost immediately. Okay, let me put on the gloves, like I said. Again, this is <laughs> me learning and struggling, so you don't have to. Um, anyways, yeah, these are probably not the best gloves for the job because they're pretty thick, but again, I won't have to worry about getting glue on my hands. But now that I'm thinking about it, this is going to be pretty hard to place some of these smaller pieces because, like, I don't have much dexterity with these gloves, right? Um, I don't know. There's probably definitely a better way to do this, but uh, let's try. So I'm just going to try to glue a piece on this globe to see how it works. And this is tricky, too, because you have a lot of rough edges with these different types of um, plastic. Um, and the reason why that's a problem is because maybe, um, is, uh, they, they're uneven. So you, you got to get like pretty good coverage with glue in order to, um, have it stick and, and to stay. Cause obviously the last thing I want is for this stuff to be falling off right? <laughs> once I have the finished product. And the other problem is that uh, this ball is technically hollow, right? So as much as I strengthened it with the duct tape, um, at the same time, I still um, can't press too hard or I'm going to crush it. But you see there, that looks pretty good. Um, again, this type of strong glue is pretty good stuff. So you see I already have a little bit of white for Antarctica there, which is pretty cool. Um, type in simple sketch of the globe. Well, now you're being reasonable. Um, and yeah, I think that's basically the process for moving forward with this is to just like, you know, try to think about like, okay, how do I do this in sort of an even way, um, that, uh, you know, is going to actually fill up the whole ball as opposed to, you know, I get to the end and it's like, oh, geez, I don't have room for, uh, you know, wh whatever, like California or something. I don't know. Um. But yeah, that's basically my my process um, and sort of my plan moving forward. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to keep drawing this out, see what I can come up with uh, along these lines because I, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's going to be tricky to get this all even and all correct. But uh, yeah, that's basically basically the game plan. Um, 
I'm going to smash a few more because people have told me that's what they want to see. Um, and it is fun and entertaining. So I'm going to smash a few more bottle caps that I know I have to crush anyways. Uh, so if you guys have questions, uh, thoughts, uh, opinions, observations, I am all ears because again, like I said, this is not something that I've done before. And, uh, you know, I, any insights or advice I'm definitely open to, because it, like I say, I'm just, um, uh, you know, doing this for the first time is not so much a typical artist. So yeah, if you guys have uh, thoughts or, or questions about this or beach cleaning in general, I'm just going to take a few more minutes to crush a few more caps, but I'm happy uh, as always to answer any questions that you guys have. So um, yeah, so I'm going to try another one of these Tropic Canna caps, these orange juice caps, because these are pretty pretty big and again i know i have to crush these anyways uh potato rock like i said doesn't work so well on these um but let's try it oh that worked <laughs> yeah this is going to be good because i sort of need smaller pieces for desert terrain these smaller yellow pieces so i think that will help really well i'm also realizing now what will really help is to probably get a pair of like uh, tweezers or pliers like needle nose pliers. I think that will really help in terms of placing a lot of this on, you know, the globe a little bit more delicately. So that's something I might want to do, uh, as I continue to work on this over the course of the next week or so. Um, I think that's a really good idea in general. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of these little pieces now I can either break or I can, uh, I can cut with the scissors, but, uh, yeah, like even this now, much more brittle. So it's kind of like cracking shells or something, you know, I got to got to kind of break through the first layer and see what I can do. These are particularly tough because you can't cut through these with scissors. These kind of like, uh, I don't know, they're almost like flatter bottle caps. Um, and you can't smash them with the rocks. So these are prime machete candidates. Um, and this is tough too, because if you hit the machete on an angle, um, you hit the surface rather than the cap. So you want to come down directly on it. Um, <laughs> I say it like I know what I'm doing, like I <laughs> figuring this out now as I do it. Um, but I know this is what you all came here for. So uh, I'm going to give give a few more of these some some good wax, like I said. Yeah. Oh yeah, that worked good. And now I think that I, now that I broke through that hard edge, I can sort of uh, use these scissors. Yeah. Oh yeah, that works beautifully. Very nice. Yeah, I can just kind of cut through those, those pieces now that they're a little more broken up. Um, like this piece, this is a medicine bottle cap. And rest assured, I, I washed the heck out of all of these. I washed them, I rinsed them, I sanitized them, sprayed them with disinfectant. I basically ran them through every filter I could think of. Um, but again, these harder ones, like a medicine bottle cap, which is meant to be sturdy, this is this is a machete candidate. And I'm finding as well that it's better to smash these with the um, open side up as opposed to close side down. I don't know if, that's, if that really means anything, but that's just been my observation. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh, there was a cap in here. That's why this one was so hard to break. <laughs> or is this part of it? I think this is part of it. Oh, cool. We get two caps. Nice. Two for one. Oh, yeah. Nothing can, <laughs> nothing can, uh, can, uh, hide from the machete power. Uh, so this is good. I think this is going to work really well. And by really well, I mean at all moving forward. Um, but anyways, that's, that's really everything I wanted to, to show you in terms of this process. Again, it's going to take me many hours to finish this. So I'm not going to live stream 
the whole thing, but I will show the final product, obviously. So I don't know if I'll do a, a, a you know, obviously I'll have pictures on my Instagram for that. Um, I might do a YouTube video about the, uh, the art gallery opening. Um, you know, it depends. Um, I think they said it's going to be like a soft opening, which I'm not quite sure what that means, but that's why I haven't mentioned their name because I don't know if I'm supposed to advertise it and I don't want to blow up their spot. Um, but rest assured at some point I will have more information on that here on Instagram, on YouTube. Um, so for those of you on Instagram, if you uh, head on over to my YouTube, it's still Professor Labs. I obviously have other videos there that I post about regular beach cleaning. So if you actually like the uh, beach clean pictures that I post, you'll you you may like the uh, the videos where I find a lot of those items. Um, so those those videos are, are a little bit more expansive because you can sort of see the process and you know sort of what I not just what I find, but you know sometimes what I try to do with a lot of this stuff. So yeah, if you uh, look me up on YouTube, Professor Labs, I'm there too. But um, Anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching me try to figure out this this process. As I said, I'll have more coming soon in terms of uh, hopefully a final product. And uh, yeah, until next time, stay safe out there. Be well. And uh, as I always say, clean well. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys now that the weather's nicer and we're heading to spring on the beach soon too. So take care and have an awesome rest of your Friday.